The Basics of Acids and Bases. So now we're going to start talking about acids and bases, and before we do that, we need to get a handle on some of the terminology that's involved in this topic. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is the classifications of acids and bases. Now, Arrhenius defined acids and bases first, but this is the most restrictive definition. We'll talk about that briefly. The Bronsted-Lowry description is more broad than the Arrhenius definition, and that's the one that we're going to stick with throughout most of this topic. And finally, the Lewis classification of acids and bases. It's the most general, but that's something that we're not going to spend a lot of time on. Let's talk about Arrhenius acids first. And basically, these are compounds that produce hydronium, this H3O+, and we also call these protons in aqueous solution, which is water. And so here we have an acid, and we're dissolving it in water, and it's producing hydronium and this chloride anion. Okay, so an H plus from this acid basically is bonded to this water molecule to produce this molecule hydronium. You'll also see this written as just hydrochloric acid in solution to form H+, which is this proton, and chloride anions. Now this doesn't really happen. They end up bonding to a water molecule. So we're going to stick with hydronium throughout this discussion. But if you see this, it means the same thing. Now Arrhenius bases, these are compounds that produce hydroxide in aqueous solution or in water. Okay, so here we have sodium hydroxide dissolved in water and it dissociates into hydroxide and sodium cations. And so that's an Arrhenius base. Now Bronsted-Lowry acids, this is a little bit more general definition. And so we say that they donate or they give away protons, an H+. The same thing is happening as we saw before, but now we're just defining this acid a little bit differently. So we can see that this H plus is donated to water, which produces hydronium, and of course we still have our chloride anion. With the Bronsted-Lowry definition of a base, we are saying that they accept protons. So they accept protons from a donor. And so in this case, we still have our strong acid, and here's water, which is actually acting as a base because it accepts the H plus from hydrochloric acid. So water is acting as a base in this reaction. Another example is ammonia. So we have ammonia dissolved in water. So water is going to donate an H plus to ammonia, and that's going to produce ammonium and hydroxide. So in this case, water is acting as the acid with this base. And that's the Bronsted-Lowry definition. Now a Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor. So it's going to accept an electron pair from a Lewis base, which is an electron pair donor. So here's an example, this type of acid and base. So here we have a Lewis acid which is going to accept an electron pair from this Lewis base. And so this is not a definition that we're going to spend a lot of time with. Okay, so now we need to talk about the pH scale. And what does pH mean? And basically it's a way to measure the acidity of a substance, or actually, better said, it's a way to describe the acidity of a substance. And it's determined by measuring the concentration of hydronium in solution. And so we can calculate pH by taking the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration in solution. After we measure the hydronium ion concentration and calculate the pH, we need to know what it means. And at 25 degrees C in water, the pH scale is going to be between 0 and 14. So this pH that we calculate based on this concentration of hydronium ions is going to be somewhere between these two extremes. And 7 is neutral. If the solution has a pH below 7, then it's an acidic solution. 
and if a solution has a pH above 7, we call it a basic solution. So the lower the pH, the more acidic the solution. The higher the pH, the more basic. Okay, so now let's remind ourselves of something that we talked about with electrolytes, strong versus weak electrolytes. Now we're going to talk about strong versus weak acids. So look at the two solutions in the two little beakers shown below. And so you need to kind of identify what is different about them and what is similar. All right, so let's look at this solution first. And so what we can see is that we only have hydronium and chloride anions in water. And everything is completely dissociated. Now if we look at this hydrofluoric acid solution, we see that we have some hydrofluoric acid still present, and some of it is dissociated into hydronium and fluoride anions. And so this is the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. So hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. And weak acids only partially dissociate in solution. So this is just a restatement. We indicate a strong acid with a single arrow. So we are saying that this reaction goes to completion. If we have a weak acid in solution, then we're going to use a double arrow. And that's going to show that this solution this reaction is in equilibrium. And so we're going to start bringing in equilibrium ideas eventually. Now, we can also categorize bases this way. And so strong bases dissolve completely into ions in solution. And so we saw this guy earlier. So this is sodium hydroxide. Put him in water. We're going to get sodium cations and hydroxide anions. Now weak bases only partially dissolve, so this is a similar situation to the weak acids. So this is an equilibrium solution here. So we have magnesium hydroxide partially dissociated, and here we have ammonia in water, and it also sets up an equilibrium. So ammonia is a weak base, magnesium hydroxide is a weak base. Now another concept that we need to understand is this idea of conjugate acid-base pairs. Now when an acid donates a proton or an H+, a conjugate base is formed also. And I haven't been calling these conjugate bases, but that's what they are. So here is our hydrochloric acid. In water we've formed hydronium, and then here is the conjugate base. So it's basically what's left over after that H plus is donated. So in this case, it's chloride anion for hydrochloric acid. Now if we have hydrofluoric acid in solution, then we can see that a similar thing happens. This H plus is donated to water to form hydronium, and we're going to end up with the conjugate base, which is the fluoride anion. And that's the conjugate base for hydrofluoric acid. Now we can do the same thing with bases. Suppose we put ammonia in solution, and ammonia is going to accept a proton from water, and it's going to form ammonium. And ammonium is the conjugate acid for ammonia. So we always form a conjugate acid-base pair. So if we put a base in solution, we're going to get a conjugate acid. If we put an acid in solution, we're going to get a conjugate base. We call them conjugate acid-base pairs because you have to be dealing with the same acid or base. So they're going to be related species that are differing only by a proton. So again, hydrofluoric acid, fluoride anion. The only difference is H+. Same thing for ammonia and ammonium. So those are conjugate acid-base pairs. They're related species that differ by only a proton or an H+. When we react an acid and a base, we're going to form water and a salt. And this is called a neutralization reaction. So here's an example of reacting a strong acid with a strong base. And when we do that, we're going to form water and a salt. And so we can see that we formed sodium chloride, which is an ionic compound. So that's one example. Another example is if we react hydrofluoric acid and ammonia, 
then we are going to get water and another salt. So this is ammonium fluoride. That's also an ionic compound, and that's a salt. So let's talk about what you should be able to do, because it's really important to get all of this terminology down before you go further in this topic. You want to recognize acids and bases by inspection. You want to write the chemical reaction for the dissolution of an acid in water. So when you put an acid in water, what products do you get? You should be able to do that. You want to write the chemical reaction for the dissolution of a base in water. So the same thing. Put a base in water, and then what products do you get? You want to be able to identify strong and weak acids and bases. And so you're going to have a list of strong acids and bases to memorize, and then other things you can assume are weak. That's the easiest way to go about that. You can identify conjugate acid-base pairs. You should be able to figure out which one is the acid and the conjugate base, or alternatively, which one is the base with the conjugate acid. And then finally, you should be able to write the chemical reaction for an acid reacting with a base, which is basically a neutralization reaction. Okay, so next we're going to talk about the auto-ionization of water.